back to the phone lines now. I've been joined on the phone line by Bright Kankambuadu, editor for sports at Pure FM in Kumasi. Thank you very much, Bright, for the time with us on GH1. All uh, right, Chris Hilton has been sacked, and he's obviously he is off and going. Beyond Chris Hilton, his sacking, is that what will save our football as it stands now? Well, uh, like I was saying, uh, thank you for having me. Uh, you know, every football, every football fan in Ghana expected Chris Hilton to be sacked after that abysmal performance. Of the of the black stars. In fact, some of us who even clamored for his appointment uh, felt very disappointed at the point in time when we realized that the black stars had to struggle through games against the likes of Angola, Central African Republic, and Madagascar. But well, many many believe we had to use the cup of nations to really assess him. With our outing, I mean, it was obvious he was going to be sacked. But I understand that the entire technical team has also been dissolved. Absolutely. I think I think I think there are a lot of a lot more things we need to do with our football. It won't just be about appointing coaches and sacking them because they don't do well. Clearly, we have a problem with mentality. Everything from administration, you know, football administration to the level of even government seems to be going wrong. And it looks like we will continue to run this cycle. I don't know how many times they're going to do this. If you are not careful, next year after the Afghan in Morocco, we were having a similar conversation mm. because we seem, we seem to be doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Mm. And that's the problem. Mm. Aside the fact that we are looking at recruiting, the bad coaching, terrible substitution, and in fact, our last game, I was even, I, I was, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what to say. When I saw the day you come into the game, I was like, what business does he have in this game? Recruiting was a total mess. And I'm hearing that people are talking about you know, his assistants, one of them joined. I think everybody going is everybody going. The entire management team of the Black Stars should also be sent. Okay. Then we look at this thing holistically. That if we are bringing a coach, what kind of coach are we bringing? What is the level of our football? What kind of football do we want to play? What kind of players do we have? What are we doing about the players' mentality? But I'm sure you you had the chance of watching Gambia versus Cameroon yesterday. Even Mauritania. Playing against Algeria, you could see teams who are willing to fight hard, die for their nation. It is something we seem to be lacking because the Black Stars players are overly pumped. They are made to feel like kings. You know, I don't know. They feel they are up there and the ordinary Ghanaian is somewhere below them. And because of that, the management committee alongside the FA seems to be, you know, condoning this. The Black Stars, their training have to be closed. They camp, no one comes there. And, you know, that is the way we are being... So they have no connection with the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm. That's why they play the game as if they are playing for. You know, it's like, you have been called to play, you don't really want to play. That's why you are playing. We need a holistic change. And I know that a lot of people are talking about Keto Kweku and the FA. Sometimes that becomes a bit difficult because they are elected into office. So the only way we can get rid of them, if they are not... If it's not that they are resigning, the only way we can get rid of them is when Congress decides to pass a vote of no confidence, in the aside that they will have to keep their position and make the changes. But I respect that we have a football argument. We have to get a very good mindset about our football, thinking about the good of the game, not individual benefits, not players being called because their friends or their agents are our friends. Those things are what. And look at our grassroots. We seem to have messed everything up. Everything up. Our league is bad. The under 20 is bad. Under 17 is terrible. All, and these are the players who graduate to come and play for the Black Stars. Mm. That is why there is this current trend that we are we are only going out for players who were born abroad, who train there, then they'll come and play for us. So those players come, first of all, we give them no orientation. There is no connection between that player and the ordinary, and the ordinary supporter. Mm. And he feels that, well, I'm playing. If I lose, fine. If I win, fine. From what we saw from the Gambia, even the Gambia, the Gambia, who had a, a lot of their players playing the Gambian League, the Gambia, they were fighting with Cameroon like they were some top-notch team. Mm. And that is what we seem to be lacking. Mm. The players are not giving you any orientation. You see the Blasters players line up. The national anthem is being played. And not a single one of them can sing it. Not one. Mm. They see no connection with us. So it is about time we look, we take a holistic approach to this whole thing. Sit down as a nation that is spending billions on, foot, on football to think that what do we have to do? Is it always about promising big bonuses? Is it always about carrying supporters and paying money? 
Is it always about, you know, spending 20 million, having huge budgets? Because look at what Mali did. In fact, the most embarrassing thing for our nation is that before the AFCON, the conversation was where we were going to come. Hmm. South Africa or Ghana or Dubai or, or you know, that for a football nation, this is not the thinking that goes in. Hmm. So, but aside the second of recruiting, we've had coaches. I mean, coaches have gone and come and gone. We need to sit down as a football nation. We need to sit down and look at where we want to set our priorities hmm. and look at having a structure and a plan. The Ben Covey five year development plan worked for that, worked for us. But one thing I know about policy documents is that you are always supposed to review it and update it mm. at a point. Okay. So you can always go through that cycle. You have a five years development program going on. Immediately you get to let's say the third year, you start another one. Okay. So by the time you get to the fifth year of this, the other one will be at the third. Okay. But you know the thing with us is that no planning. We always want to get results because we are Ghana, and it doesn't work like that. Mm.